Hey there, this is Jeff Lars here, and we're on to part four of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Today we are going to finish our trip into the Deepwood Shrine and hopefully finish off the boss this video. I forgot to set my timer there. Alright. So it looks like a simple puzzle here with plenty of death from above. Basically we gotta press that switch down. And do that. I'm gonna pull this back so we can walk through in the end. Now, sorry if I seem a little bit rushed when I'm going through this. I've actually had a little bit of little few recording issues today, so this is actually my third time going through this part. So sorry if I'm a little rushed. I'm getting a little sick of this. So I'm just gonna take care of these guys. Oops. All right, take this small key. Now we're gonna head up here. Hopefully we'll find some hearts. We're kind of hurting for, right, for them right now. Nothing in there. There we go. That should be good enough for now. Let's go down the stairs first. Some stuff I wanna get done down here. First off, take care of that fly there. He's always a pain. Nice big chest. Now we got the compass. Not that we really ever use it too much. I mean, not too. It's not really useful. I'm gonna press that down. We'll come back to that chest a little bit later. Yeah, I know it's a puzzler, but we'll f we'll find it a little later on. No need to worry. All right, get out of my way. Don't want to play. <laughs> All right, through the little spore field here. It's a little faster to roll, but not by much. And now in here we have the mini boss. It's kind of an annoying mini boss, but he's not too too hard. It's basically kind of like Wiggler, except he's got a a heart for a tail. So you slash. You first you hit him on the nose, stuns him. And he gets really angry and starts chasing you around while he's red. So it's kind of like Wiggler's cousin from Mario, but he's really easy to take out. <laughs> All right, and we have our chest. And our dungeon item is the Gust Jar. No, I kind of, I kind of like this item. Let's just equip it. Put it on B. It's a, it's a bit of a, it's a nice item, but it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. You basically. All it's really used for is just sucking up all these sort of dust there and got a nice heart piece. So you can suck up all those little spore things, you can suck up spider web. So it's it's basically it's basically a vacuum cleaner. But it, it's pretty useful. Oh now we can finally get rid of these guys. Not my favorite enemies. One way to do it is throw a pot at them. Oop, chest activated. Another way is to just suck them for a bit. They turn gray and stunned and just take them out. Press that other switch. Ten mysterious shells. Twenty mysterious shells now. Now we'll find out what those are used for a little later. Do a little clean up here because there's one more switch. There it is. Now I just activated a little warp pad up there, which will eventually allow us to get that third heart piece. And I'm just gonna open that door up, and this should lead us right back to the barrel room. Perfect. Now, there's a spider weapon here that we couldn't do anything with earlier because we didn't have the gust jar, but now we can do that. So we're just going to walk this way, spin it there, and as you can see, there's that little hole there. We want to fall right down. <laughs> so now another interesting little mechanic about this dungeon. You get to use a lily pad as a boat. Pretty simple stuff. You use the gust jar to sort of act as your motor, and we can just travel along now. So, usually I'm just going to be doing this in maybe updating once a day. Get, get out of here. Uh, but for this week, I think I'm going to be doing more than that. I'm going to go to the right first. Because I'm actually on break right now, and sadly, I really don't have much to do. So, this, this is a fun, fun little afternoon activity. So, I think I'll be doing multiple updates a day for now. But after this week, don't expect that to happen again until at least this summer. I'm going to be pretty busy when I get back to school. 
All right, we'll get rid of those pillars. Whoops. Whoops, I didn't jump a little bit too far there. Let's start to send this this way. And here we are back in that room earlier where there's that chest that we couldn't get. Which you'll see in a moment. Yeah, I like the lily pad boat thing. It's a nice idea, but it, get, it gets annoying. So you just have to keep mashing the gust jar button. And, I don't know. So it's, a, it's a cool idea, but I just wish there was a way to do it without making my fingers get tired. Thankfully that pot stays there. If not, that would be a little bit a little tricky. Oh, now the death from above is in the water. It seems a little silly that the slugs would be right over the water. I don't know. Just not a very good idea on their part. Ooh, another cool thing about the gust jar is that it can actually suck these stretchy mushrooms all over the place. So, let's see if I can get a heart from these. Nothing. So, you don't need to stand right next to them anymore. And don't have to worry about pulling. Oops. Went a little bit too far. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be careful when doing this part. Don't want to fall in the water. There we go. See, again, doing it too short. And there we go. The big key. So now we can go fight the boss. That activates another warp pad. And now we're back at the start of the dungeon. First of all, I'm going to go back on this other warp pot pad here. And get the uh, get the heart piece. Mix three heart pieces in already. This is that's that's a lot for just after the first dungeon. This is a pretty hefty dungeon considering it's the first dungeon. I mean. At least in most of the 2D Zelda games, the first dungeons can be completed in a matter of, matter of minutes easily. But this one's a little bit heftier. And that's probably because there are actually only five real dungeons in this game aside from the, uh, aside from the last one. Which is kind of a disappointment. I, kinda, I do kind of wish it was a little bit longer. But, yeah, you know, each one, they're, I think they're quality dungeons. Some of them do get kind of annoying though, but we're not going to worry about that for now. Alrighty, so here we are at the boss, and I have a couple of minutes left. Let's see if I can tr let's see if I can take this guy out really quickly. First, you got to go through this uh, this cutscene here. It's one of those chews, I think they're called chew jellies or something like that. Or raining from above. This temple seems to have something with uh, stuff raining from above, all those slugs falling down, and now the boss is just raining down from the ceiling. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so this guy's pretty simple. He's a big guy, and take him out, oop, gotta get out of the way, oopsies. You just gotta suck away his base, and that'll just destabilize him, and you just gotta dodge him. Make sure he doesn't fall on you, because that would not be fun. And when he's on the ground, just slash away at him. Now, after he's fallen down, he's going to jump. No out of the way. And then just rinse, lather, and repeat. Oops. Yeah, he's not too hard. Just got to make sure you don't let him get too close to you. Come on, fall over, I don't have much time. There we go. Just mash that sword button. Get ready for the jump. And let's get rid of that nasty little base of yours. Whoopsies. Out of my way. There we go. This should do it. If I actually hit him rather than rolled into him. Yep, there we go. The first dungeon boss down. <laughs> now it's time for us to get our first element. Hmm. 
All right, we have the earth element. Well, on that note, I'm going to end the video. I've been Jeff Lars. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.